Hello, good evening. How are you? Good evening, teacher. Hey. I'm fine. Nice, nice to be with you tonight. So, well, uh, here in Santa Ana, it's raining a lot. Is it raining where you are right now? No. In Lovasco, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it was very hot, but then suddenly it's raining and it's still driving. It's kind of difficult. But anyway. Possible, más na posiblemente más noche y beba, porque si sí está relampagueando. Ah, maybe it's too hot. Yeah. Okay. I was reading somewhere that the the month that is the most rainy is September. I don't know if you you have read anything like that. Okay, so it's nice to be here with you tonight and I hope everything is going well with the platform. Remember that uh, we need to move on. Tonight we have to do the class and then we have to do the exercise. Also, uh, we were speaking yesterday about pricing and before that one, the marketing. So uh, how do you believe companies calculate pricing for their products? your opinion imagine that you are part of a company and then you have to set a price yesterday we did a an exercise right where um you have to put some pricing and you were telling me something interesting you were telling me that it's difficult because you don't know certain things right so for example for the tour we don't know uh, i mean if you are going to include the rooms or the food uh, or what is going to be the route how many people are going to be involved. So uh, imagine that you need to calculate the price for something, for any product. What do you think are the things that you need to, to check so you can put the right price for the right product? What do you think? Good night, good evening. Sorry. For me, it uh, uh, depends uh, for quality. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. So you say that it depends on, on what? What what are the elements that we need to analyze so we can set the price, the correct price for, for a product? What do you think? For any product or service? Based on what we checked yesterday. What do you think? But I can't hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Ah, okay. Okay. I, I, I hear you, but it's for me, okay. or, or in my opinion, it, it depends. Uh, the the price is depend the 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 different the different um actions, okay. the different the different factors. Uh, for example, the, the four piece. Uh, uh, is depend for the for the for the materials, okay. and in the in the other the other uh, the other things is is about the prices of demand is in the offer. Okay. Very good, very interesting. So yes, uh, 
the raw materials are very uh, important. Do you know what is raw materials? Mm. Raw materials? Yeah, what is a raw materials? Raw is spelled uh, R-A-W, raw materials. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you right now, nice. Um, for a uh, raw materials is for uh, the que material está hecho. Yes, something like that. It's like materia prima for a product. Materia prima, right? yes. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, the raw materials and the cost. I mean, when you create a product, uh, I believe that we were discussing about that one before. Uh, ideas, I believe that everybody has good ideas for products or services, right? The problem is to implement to implement an idea uh, because you need to analyze a lot of things. Uh, and yes, you need to analyze not only if the idea is going to be feasible. Do you know what is feasible? Okay. Feasible is okay. like when you say in Spanish, factible. I mean, if People are going to buy the product, and uh, if uh, the idea is possible to be built, and uh, many other things. And of course, one of the most important things is the money, right? The money that you are going to invest. And raw materials is one of the most important things. I mean, what are going to be the raw materials that you are going to build? Uh, what is the cost of those uh, raw materials? And... Uh, what is the logistics on how you are going to get those materials? Uh, mm -hmm. And I mean, if that goes or that targets to other things, for example, machines, right? The machines that you are going to use to process that raw material. And then, I mean, in my whole, how goes the process of creating a product? Uh, after you have the machines and you know what are the materials we need to to get people that are trained not only to process the raw material i'm sorry go ahead mm -hmm. oh i'm sorry you, i thought that somebody mm -hmm. was going to speak so i think i think the, the other point uh to teacher huh? i i remember that what uh when i i um i go to eat pupusas, for example. Uh, the price of the pupusa in the San Salvador Center, for example, 50 cents. Uh, but if you, if I go, for example, um, Los Planes de Renderos, uh, uh, the, pupus, the price pupusa is around $1, uh, one point. Uh, Twenty-five dollars. It depends. It depends uh, the the locations. I think that is another thing that is very important. And I mean that makes sense, right? Because in mind that yeah, if you have a pizzeria in your neighborhood that is, I mean, then in, in your house, for example, uh, yeah, you are not going to spend a lot of money in rent or uh, in some like the things that you are going to have there, like tables and many other things. But if you rent a whole building with a lot of people, with a lot of tables, with a lot of things, of course, proposals are going to be more expensive, right? More expensive, but uh, also, uh, for example, in Los Planes, uh, the local restaurant in Los Planes, uh, Pupuseria patties. Ah, pupuseria patties. Mm -hmm. It's very delicious. It's very famous. Ah, okay. Uh, also, uh, the price is 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 high. Is, uh, but a pupusa in in San Salvador Center is is delicious, but not not most famous. Exactly. So, uh, yes, that is kind of the brand, right? The brand of the pupuseria. For example, I believe that nowadays, uh, almost everybody, when we want to go out and eat something, anything, uh, what we do is we ask our friends, right? 
And yes, there are many places where you can go and eat, but they will recommend you the best, the best places, right? And also, uh, well, now that we are in the, uh, in the era of the uh, uh, people that get involved in cell phones and things like that, we know that we can go online and we can go and uh, look for reviews. Do you know what are the reviews? Reviews. Reseña. Very good. So, I mean, if you look for, in Google, for example, if you look for a restaurant, you are going to see now uh, the locations, the menu, uh, some pictures, um, and many other things, and also reviews. The interesting part about that one is that you are going to see reviews from regular people, from customers, that uh, they have tasted, they have gone there. So that is very interesting, right? I'm sorry? Ramiro, need water. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, I mean, uh, and the price, I mean, uh, going back to what we were discussing before, right? The price is one of the most important things because maybe the place is nice, maybe the food is nice, but if the price uh, is too high or if the price is not the adequate one, then probably, uh, I mean, you won't be happy about that one, right? Okay. Teacher, uh, the price, the price, it depends, the, the competence. Yes, exactly. So there are uh, a lot of products that they, they are competing, right? There are companies that they are competing one to each other, and they are trying to, to get most of the customers. So, for example, in, in Ateos, uh, uh -huh. the, the, the price is uh, three, four dollars. Ah, uh, but the Ateos, the Ateos pupusas is very good. Yes, uh, ahí todas las dan al mismo, al mismo precio, porque si no, no vende la, ahí a la parte. Y Mayen, uh, where is that, you say, in, in Ateos? Uh, en el puente. Sí. No me acuerdo cómo se dice puente en inglés. Bridge. 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 Yeah. The bridge. Uh, <laughs> next to Aya y Baca. Yeah. No, no es famous. Es uh, famous is the uh, place. So where the, are they? Yes. Three for four dollars. <laughs> I'm sorry, where? It's delicious. Revueltas, uh, for dollars. Ah, but the, the key the, the in this location is the, the three pupusas is in the back. Yeah. Ready, ready to sell. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Yes. It's the, the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, marketing. <laughs> yeah, Go. definitely. That is that is permitted. Definitely, we can do some marketing for brothers and friends and things like that. You going to the you are going to the play to the, the beach and in Sonsonate stop in the hotels by food. Okay. I didn't know that one. I have to taste it. And, and are they very good? Yes. So are, are good, are good. Mm, okay. I didn't know that. One. Perfect. Interesting. So we have learned so many things here. Uh, yeah, I see it. Okay. So uh, let's continue with the class. And we're going to check. And we're going to start today with a video. Okay. Let me check. Okay. So I'm going to uh, set the video and you uh, 
are going to watch it and tell me what did you understand on that one, what is this about, and if you have any comments, okay? Uh, but before that one, we're going to check the attendance. I was forgetting about that one. So, Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. Ana Verónica Hernández Rodríguez. Present. Good. I'm here. I'm sorry. Ah, okay. But I'm you were... eating bananas right now. <laughs> I'm I, sorry. I thought you were eating pupusas. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez. Eric Enrique Reyes Martínez. Here in the house. Good. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Good teacher. Good. Ingrid Paola Hernández Tenorio. Jennifer Esmeralda Amaya Arias. Present teacher. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. Present. Good. Jose Alfredo Hueso López. Present teacher. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Here, teacher. Good. Carla Alejandra Castillo. Here, teacher. Good. María Julia Ramos Bar. Here, teacher. Good. Mónica Wendy Avalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Present. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidoni. Present teacher. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present teacher. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Roberto Carlos Avilés Vera. I'm reading. Good. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Present teacher. Good. Victor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. I'm here. Good. Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Perfect. Okay, so now, yes, we're going to watch the video as I was telling you. We're going to check. Um, I got you, Ramiro and Monica. Okay, uh, we're going to see the video and check what we understand about that, okay? And then you can provide comments. Let's see how it goes. Here we go. How to price the product. So I got a great question from one of my YouTube viewers, Eduardo, love you guys. And Eduardo wrote in to say, hi Evan, I have a question for you. What happens if you found the product or service that people need and is extremely valuable, but are having a hard time deciding how much to charge people for it? Thanks, Eduardo. So this is a great question and one that every entrepreneur has to go through when you're launching your product, your service. And I'm gonna give you three tips. A lot of people will look at pricing based on your cost, right? You look at, well, it cost me $50 to make it, so I'm gonna sell it for $100 and make this margin. It's the wrong way to look at it because you have to think about the value. First point is value. A customer cares about what value they're getting from it. If you're trying to sell me something, I don't care that it costs you 50 bucks. I may only look at it as a $40 product and that's the maximum that I'm gonna be able to spend on it. So your cost doesn't matter here for your pricing. Your pricing should look at the value that you're adding to your customer. How much value can you bring in there? The more value you're gonna add, the more money you're gonna make, the more you can charge for your product or service, okay? Business, the, one of the most important rules is adding value. You wanna make a lot of money quickly, you need to add a lot of value to your customer quickly. So think about how you can add more value, how you can make your customers' lives easier and what that time savings is worth to them or what the extra bonus that they get from using your product or service is worth to them, then that's how you figure what you're gonna charge, okay? So think about value added instead of a cost-based way of pricing your product, okay? Number two is your audience. You have to understand who your audience is and what their budget is. And there's two ways that companies usually go. It's either going after low, low quantity, but high price ticket, or big quantity, 
and low price ticket. So you look at cars, okay? You have Ferrari, you have Honda. They're both selling cars, but they're selling to a different audience. Their audience have different budgets, and so they sell different vehicles to them. And it's not just about a different price point, it's a different car completely, right? When you buy a Ferrari versus a Honda Civic, you're getting a different car, okay? It's not the same car, and they understand who their audience is and what their budget is. So if you're selling to Ferrari, those guys are spending tons of money on it, but they're getting still value for their dollars, right? They're, they're buying it because they feel like they're still getting good value. And then when you buy a Honda Civic, it's a completely different audience. But the people who buy a Honda Civic, they're still feeling like they're getting value for it. So you're pricing it according to the value, but understanding your target audience, and then you build your product or service to cater to that market. So you have to understand as a company, which direction are you gonna go in? Do you wanna work with a few clients who are paying you good money, and that's how you're gonna grow your business? Or do you wanna hit a ton of people, mass market this thing, and that reflects having a lower price point for your product or service? Number three is stage of business. You have to think about what stage of business you're at right now. Are you a pure startup or do you already have a reputation of being established? Because there is a bias against startup entrepreneurs because it's riskier. It's riskier dealing with startups. As a customer, it's harder to deal with a startup entrepreneur than it is a more established business. Why? You look at, so I don't know what you're selling. Say you're selling machines or equipment. If I buy from you, I wanna make sure that you're still around in five years. I need somebody who's gonna maintain my stuff. If my machine breaks down, I want someone to come and fix it or give me a replacement. If I'm worried that you're just starting, you're not gonna be around in five years, then it makes it riskier for me to buy from you. Say you're selling a service. If you're a consultant, as an example, I wanna look at, well, who have you worked with before? What other companies like me have you helped? If the answer is nobody, you're just getting started, then it's risky for me, right? I, I'm probably gonna say no. It's harder for me to get to that yes because you don't have the track record. So no matter what you're selling, there is a bias against the pure startups because you don't have that track record of experience. It's riskier for me to work with you than somebody else. So typically you'll find that there's a, a price reduction that comes with startup entrepreneurs. So you start by having a lower price because you need to get your name out there. You need to get a portfolio and you need to get some traction, some momentum to show that everything you say works actually works, right? So you have a lower price point. And then as you get more experience, as you get better, as you can add more value and demonstrate that, you can increase your prices. A big challenge though for a lot of entrepreneurs is we stay stuck at that low pricing. Too many entrepreneurs underprice themselves. And what I want you to do is think about how can you start increasing your pricing, okay? You're adding a lot of value, you're just not charging for it. And test it. Test working with a 10% increase and another 10% increase and see where you're starting to get pushback from your customers because a lot of times the customers who can't afford to pay that little boost in revenue those are not your ideal customers they're not your best clients they're the ones who give you the the hardest the hardest time they don't work for business to you they don't appreciate your value and you work to make them happy and they're never happy and they're not giving you a lot of money every entrepreneur almost can increase their prices and it will help their business so test it Test it, start working with more ideal clients. If you're in the brand new startup stage, you don't have anything launched yet, then fine. It may even be free, just for you to get some experience and build up a portfolio and build up a client list. Get people giving you testimonials, but then start increasing your prices. Don't be afraid to constantly check and test your pricing to see where you can increase it to the point where you're getting feedback from your customers saying, hey, this is our limit. One quick example. So part of what I do is I work with brands. I work with brands who are trying to reach entrepreneurs or create content for them, help them with their marketing campaigns. The very first one I did, they said, Evan, we want you to write a 300 word blog post for our site. We'll pay you 500 bucks to do it. You can link back to your site. I'm like, I get a link back from a big site. They're going to help promote me and they're going to pay me 500 bucks to do it. I'm in. Why not? But I didn't just do what they asked for. I didn't just just write that 300 words. I wrote 1500 words and I made a video and I promoted it. I did way more than anybody else did that they hired. And I slowly started increasing my prices because I was adding a lot more value. So I wasn't just charging $500, now it's $2,500. You want me to write a blog post for your site? It's $2,500. That's what I charge. That's where I'm getting some, some resistance now from clients. So that's where I've gotten to. But I've increased my prices five times. I'm not just talking a small 10% increase. Five-time increase in the pricing because 
I added more value and I continuously increased it. It went from 500 to 1,000 to 1,500 to 2,000 to 2,500 over the course of about a year and a half by testing my prices. And I could still be that guy stuck at 500 bucks where meanwhile I could be charging $2,500. And that's where a lot of you guys are. You're underpricing your products. So remember, pricing is important. Remember to think about charging based on value, the value that you're adding. Think about your demographic, your target audience, how much you can afford and what their budget is. And think about your stage of business. And if you're just trying to attract clients to get started, or now if you're really trying to grow a big company and start making some serious revenues, don't be afraid to test your pricing. Believe. For those of you watching like the video, please give it a thumbs up below. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment underneath. Ask me a question, I'll make a video response underneath. And if you like more videos, you want to see more like this, click on my face, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Okay, what did you get from the video? Easy. <laughs> Do you think it's easy? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I uh, literally understand it. <laughs> Is it for the the speak so speak so speak and yeah so and so difficult to the to the hearing all understand all the that he said but the ideas about okay and what ideas did you get for example the put the the Number one in the value on the press in the price. And I understand that the value and the price not did the same the same thing. Um, the, the value is um and the or the price uh, have to uh, put uh, um value because it's add add to the product. And for the satisfaction of the client or the customer, and uh, is that understanding the more or less? Very good. So definitely, that is something very important, right? That is not the same price and value. Sometimes some articles they have a higher price than the value, and sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes the price is very low, and then the value is low. So, for example, I remember. A uh, long time ago, when I first had my first house, and uh, there were many things that were broken. And I said, oh, this is going to be very expensive to be fixed. But then I went to the to the store and get the products, and I, I realized that it was very cheap. Uh, it's very cheap to fix the things yourself. Of course, you need to invest time, you need to research. But also, it's not only cheap, but also uh, it's satisfactory, right? Because you do everything the way that you do. So, I mean, the value on that one for me was very, very high, right? Yes, maybe the, the price is a characteristic of the product. And the, the, the value is a satisfaction or is... Um, all I feel about the, the, the product that I I shop and uh, is the 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 maybe the difference in between the value and the price. Definitely, right. So definitely that is uh totally different. So uh, we need to understand that one. Uh, mostly when you are going to buy is important, definitely. But when you are going to sell a product, definitely that is something that you need to analyze, right? Good. Any other comments or opinion on what did you understand on the video? Teacher, um, in the in the in the video, uh, Evans mentioned uh, in the video about the three points uh, for identify the the best price. Uh, Roberto mentioned number one is the value. Adding a uh, value for a product or service uh, in the Evans mentioned a little change. You add value at your product or your uh, your service is very very important uh, for the customers. Um, the second the second tips 
is the your arrange uh, is depends uh, it or in determining uh, if the product or service is uh, the low quality or big big quality is depend your audience is very very important for for the price the product or service the third tips is the stage a business uh, but the 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 question uh, Evans mentions what is the risk uh, for for you for them what what is the risk um this is the the the, the three points uh the other the other uh, in the same line the three points uh, mention uh, test your product uh, don't be afraid test it the product uh, week, uh, weekly monthly but always test it the product or service very good perfect thank you very much yeah the three points are very important and also the last part that you mentioned i believe that when you are going to sell a product you need to believe in the product right you need to to really feel it if you don't believe in the product is is it's not going to be a good a good thing i mean maybe you can try to sell it but when people they ask you questions maybe you will you wouldn't know what to say so if you really believe in the product it's going to be much easier and it's not possible to believe in the product if you don't test it yourself you need to try it out. So you identify good things and bad things because nothing is perfect, right? And be ready for the questions because people are going to ask questions. Right? Why is like this or why is it not possible to do it this way? So that is something that definitely is going to happen. Perfect, thank you, Ernesto. Very good comment. And uh, any other comments or opinion on the on the video that we just watched? Yeah, he, he was speaking kind of fast, right? So uh, remember that that is something that we need to try to do little by little, right? To speak fluent is not only to speak fast, it's to speak properly, to use the words correctly, right? So uh, that is also very important. And uh, this kind of video is something that you can watch. You can put the subtitles, the class captions, and you will be able to see the words and get more, more vocabulary. And the good thing is that you will be able to listen to the pronunciation. So uh, these are very good exercises. Okay, let's continue. Yesterday we were speaking about pricing and we will continue on that one. Uh, types of pricing strategies. So we have the penetration pricing, skimming pricing, competition pricing, product line pricing, bundle pricing, psychological pricing, premium pricing, optional pricing, cost-based pricing, and cost-plus pricing. In mind all the strategies that you have for you to set up the pricing of product. So the good thing is that you ex exist already the strategy, so you can choose the one or the combination of the ones for your own product. So let's go more in deep into this one. Okay, penetration pricing. Uh, Maria Julia, could you please help me reading about this? Penetration pricing. A low price is set by the company to build to build sales and market share. This may be done, done to establish position in, in a market with pre-existent pre pre mm -hmm. similar product of, on offer. Once a, position once. Is, once a position is created, created the price create the price may be raised um, a satellite channel satellite. provider satellite channel provider may offer 
on introductory price and the increasing has a business growth. Very good. So this is the penetration price. So this is when a low price is set. So the price is not high, is low. By the company to build up sales and market share. So what is build up? Anybody? A build up is the same as build. So it's, it means that you are going to, uh, to create a company reputation, let's say. And yeah. uh, this, uh, go ahead. But the, the word build is uh, more oh, using yeah. in the construction. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. is, is more, uh, I, in, the, in my case, I hear in the word uh, build uh, more uh, when we, don't, we, we say uh, Roberto is building a right or uh, is building a house. Uh, for that, uh, the word, uh, the context of the word and the use is uh, not this familiar for me. Well, actually it's the same. So in this case, it's to construct a reputation because uh, this is for new products, right? You are going to launch a new product and you know, actually it says here, that is going to be uh, when you have similar products in the market. So since you have similar other products from other company and you want to compete, so you uh, that's why the name is penetration pricing because you want to, to have a space in the market for your product. So you are going to build up the reputation. You're going to build up uh, the way so people uh, know your product. So it's interesting. Uh, and well, these are phrases. I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, do you know what are the phrasal verbs? Okay, phrasal verbs are verbs that are two or three words. So for example, get up. So, but the interesting part about the phrasal verbs is that the meaning changes. So for example, it's not the same to say get in or get out or get up or get down or get over. And the verb is the same, but depending on the word that is next to it, the meaning of the uh, verb is going to be totally different. Actually, I have a dictionary somewhere there. Uh, and the word get, my dictionary is very, very big, you know. Only the word get has four pages of ways for you to use that word. And of course, it depends on the word that is next to you. Get it, get over, for example, is not the same to, to get up, right? So that happens. Uh, and it's very common. But when you see something like build up, that most likely is going to be the same meaning as build. So that will be. And uh, it's something that we need to be checking. Uh, I believe I believe that when you are learning English, and for example, when you see something like this paragraph, it's very rich because you see a lot of things. You are able to see not only new vocabulary, but you can see and identify the purpose of a word in this context. Uh, for example, here up is part of build, it's not separated. So you can look for prepositions, you can look for the, the order of the words that sometimes is different in English and try to understand why. Why is this way? If you understand that one, it's going to be easier for you to speak later on. Uh, Mauricio. For example, is is similar to get get over. If we use, we use get over now, it's like superalo or get over here, like come here or ven aquí. Yeah, so it's different, can you see? So definitely that English is very rich. 
Um, sometimes it's difficult, I won't lie to you. There are some things that in Spanish we never use, but in the rest of the things, I mean, if you understand the usage, not the translation in Spanish of the word, the usage of the word, then you will be able to speak English very well. Very good. Let's check some other words and uh, about this, uh, this first paragraph. So it says a lot of prices set by the company to build up sales and market share. Just so that we check about market share. This may be done uh, to establish position. This is what I was saying. Establish position to build up a reputation, right? In a market with pre-existing similar products on offer. So here you understand very well that this penetration pricing this strategy is when you are going to compete with similar products. Once, what is once, my friends? Very good. Once is like one time. You can say twice, you can say thrice, and that's it, right? Once a position is created, the prices may be raised. So this is part of the strategy. You say to the public, this is an introductory price. That means that in the future, the price is going to change, right? A satellite, the pronunciation of that word is satellite. A satellite channel provider may offer an introductory price and then increase as business grows. So that is this strategy. Uh, do you have any questions about this one? Yes, teacher. Uh, I I don't understand the sat satellite light channel. Satellite. Uh -huh. Satellite channel. Okay, that is, uh, so it says, a satellite channel provider may offer an introductory price and then increase the business growth. That means that when you say a satellite channel is about logistics. For example, some companies, uh, and this is very common in the US, in El Salvador, not that much, but some companies, they have a product. Let's say, I don't know, a watch, a smart watch, okay? And they say, okay, the price for this one is, I don't know, uh, $20, let's say. But in Walmart, you can buy it for $15. And people say, why? Why in the store, in the name of the store, in, my, in, in, the, in the main store is $20. And in Walmart, that is another company, and that is a satellite channel. Okay, so it's another channel, another channel of distribution. Oh, why okay. Why in that channel is cheaper? But it's because uh, a strategy that they sign. Uh, Walmart, they want more people and they have the people to offer and the product wants to, to, to penetrate the market. So that's why this happens. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay. Any okay. other question? Is there any other question? Okay, let me then go to the next. Skimming pricing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mauricio, could you please help me with this one? Okay. Skimming pricing. Here, the initial price is set. It's set high and may slowly be brought down. This will allow the company to introduce the product step by step to different layers of the market. Electronic and tech gadgets often start at a very high price, which is subsequently lowered with the lowest point reached right before a new model is launched. Okay, this is the scheme in pricing. So in this strategy, the initial price is set high. So this is the opposite. At the beginning, when you launch the product, the price is high and may slowly be browed down. What is brow down, my friends? It's like a fall down. Very good. That is like fall down. So, Brout is the 
pass or bring. And yeah, so this happens. I mean, for cell phones, yesterday we were speaking about the iPhone 15 that is going to be launched these days. The price is going to be very high, right? And people buy it. I mean, you might think that the logical part for the human brain is that if the price, I mean, you know that the price is going to be very high. I will wait. I will wait one year and then I will buy it maybe $200, $300 less. But that doesn't happen. People get crazy, right? They want the newest iPhone and they go and make a line to buy this product. So it works. This strategy works. Even when you may think that it's not logical, but why? Why do I have to pay, pay for something very high price right now if I know that in the future I can buy it for less price? Humans are like that, right? So this will allow the company, what is allowed? Permit. Permit. It's a synonym of permit. So this will allow the company to introduce the product step by step uh, to different layers of the market. And that happens. So, I mean, if you see the first launching of this kind of products is in the US, right? Maybe some places in Europe. Then a few months later, they can reach Latin America. Africa is the last. And that happens because it's uh, the way that they they see the market where they, where it's more money, they launch the products that are right. So it says electronic and tech gadget. What is gadget? Accessorios. Something like that. Very good. So tech gadgets often start at a very high price, which is subsequently lowered with the lowest points which right before a new model is launched. So that is it. And that is actually uh, Apple's strategy, right? I believe that that is something that they really, really do. And uh, other companies, they sometimes do that as well. Uh, do you have any questions in this scheme and pricing uh, one? Okay, remember that if you have questions about a word or the pronunciation of a word, you can ask. So that keeps in your mind. No questions. Okay. So let's move on. The other one says competition pricing. Uh, Oseas, could you please help me reading that one? Hey. Competition pricing, when trying to go head to head with competitors offering similar benefits, a company may decide to A, price higher to create a higher quality perception or to target a niche market. Niche. Price the same to show more benefits for the same price. Price lower to try to gain a wider customer base. Okay, so. When you, this is this is a strategy that you can use with the first one, that is penetration pricing. So when you are going to compete with other products that are the same or very similar, there are three strategies that we can have, we can use. It says when trying to go head to head. So that means next to it, uh, the other one, right? Uh, with competitors offering similar benefits and company may decide, so the first one is something that sometimes works. I mean, price higher to create a higher quality perception. That word is big. Perception. It's not real. It's not really better quality. People perceive that because of the price is better quality. This is like when you go and buy a shirt in Simon for a hundred dollars. And then the same shirt is in another store for $25. It's the perception, right? People believe that because it's in that store with that brand, 
is the best, but not always it's, it's the truth, right? And then it says, or to target a niche market. Uh, what is niche? Do you remember? We discussed that before. What is that? Nicho. Nicho. Very good. It's like the, the target market, right? That we want to reach about that one. The uh, other one is price the same to show more benefits for the same price. This is the most common, I believe. Uh, the price is the same, but you say this is better because of this and this and this, and you launch benefits that the competition don't have. So this is probably the most common. I'm sorry? Okay. So, and the last one, price lower, and this is penetration actually. Price lower to try to gain a wider customer base. So you say my, my product is the same than these other three products. So I'm going to sell in a lower price. So all the other people, they come to my company instead of you. That would be it. What is wider? Okay, más amplio in this context. Very good, perfect. Uh, do you have any questions on this right now? For me, not teacher. Okay. Okay, product line pricing. Uh, Ramiro, is it possible for you to read? Product line pricing. Here, different products in the same range may be set at different prices. Television sets are priced differently depending on whether they are HD or not, whether they have Wi Fi features or not, and whether they are 3D or not. Very good. So, this is very simple. You sell TVs. And that is the line of the product. But among the, the line, there are different kinds of TVs. Not all the TVs are the same pricing. Depending on the features that it has, that is going to be the pricing. It says here different products in the same range may be set at different prices. Television sets are priced differently depending on whether they are HD or not whether they have Wi-Fi features or not, or whether they are 3D or not. So that is it, it's very simple. So the pricing strategy here depends on the features that you offer in the products, even when the products are kind of the same. Uh, do you have any questions on this one? Okay, bundle pricing. Let's see, this is going to be for Roberto Carlos. That's me, the bundle pricing. A group of products may be handled together and sold at reduced price. Supermarkets often use this metal doubt they buy one, get one free offers. Oh, very good. So actually the word bundle is that one. Do you know what is bundle? Bundle. No, no idea. Okay, so bundle is like when you say combo. Como combo. Exactly. So it's como, es como un combo donde van varias so cosas paquete. juntas. Un paquete. Uh -huh. Very good. So that is bundle, bundle pricing. So uh, as it says here, a group of products may be bundled together Two and sold at a reduced price. So, uh, and here actually says, supermarkets often use this method through their buy one, get one for free. So that is very common in the supermarket. That you buy, I mean, you see that there is mayonnaise and you see that it's with another mayonnaise or with another new product that they launch or a spoon, I don't know, many things they do. So that is a bundle 
So, and uh, in some companies, for example, in technology, uh, you can create your own bundles. So, for example, if you buy a computer online, sometimes you can buy the computer and then you can add the printer, the antivirus, uh, the case for the computer, uh, and there is a discount if you get all the products together. So this is a strategy uh, for them to sell more products. Even if they give a discount, of course, they are going to get more money for that one. Right? Uh, let's see if there is any question here. I thought through there. I don't think so. Do you have any question here? No, teacher, uh, but in the same line, uh, in the supermarket is very, very common. Uh, this method, buy one, get one free offers. That is true. I mean, I believe that the most common is in the supermarket, right? Uh, is it possible, depending on, on, on the features, for example, in Christmas, sometimes there are some bundles that you can get for different things, right? Because it's Christmas time. Or for Halloween in the US, that is also happening. Candy is with many other things. Very good, perfect. Any other? Uh -huh. In in price mark, is saying the uh, the bundle pricing with the package uh, for presentation same, but the prices is very lower. That is true. That is true. I mean, in uh, price mark, the strategy for them is that one. If you are going to buy a lot of something a box, a packet, a pallet of something. And that's why it's very uh, successful that business because it's not like a regular supermarket, right? Mm -hmm. Pizza, that is, is fantastic. I really love pizza. Right? The pizza is delicious in the price. Yeah, yes. very good. I also I like the, the hot dogs also and and the wings. The wings are very, very nice. But I don't know if they sell the wings anymore. I don't know. The wings in the price mark. Yeah. No. No, right. Not, not, not to teach. Yes. Not to teach. Chicken wings. And yeah. donuts. Very good. Uh, donuts, yeah. I remember donuts as well. Are you recommend? Uh, yeah, the, those are very good. Are very good. I'm <laughs> not I'm not that into sweets, you know. I don't like very much sweets, but they are good. I, I can eat one and that's it. Okay. Okay, so let's continue. Psychological pricing. Interesting. Blanca Tunaka is going to read this one. Okay. Psychological pricing. Psychological. Psychological pricing. Often a company will make small changes to prices to, to make a customer Think the item is priced lower than it is. This is often seen in prices ending in 90, 90, 90. 90. For example, for example, an item market 199 will be perceived as closer in price to oh, Hundreds, one hundred, then two hundred. Very good. So I believe that we have seen this every everywhere, right? This is something very very common nowadays. So psychological pricing. Often the company will make small changes to prices to make a customer think. This is very important. Can you see that almost everything that we have checked right now is perception? the perception of something. So uh, they make small changes to prices to make a customer think the item is priced lower than this. And this is something seen in prices ending in night. Like, this is... <laughs> the papers, the papers. Okay, that commercial was sponsored by Veronica. Okay, so let's continue. 
So uh, this is very interesting because it's something that we see all the time, even for Black Friday, right? Uh, I believe that everybody knows that sometimes they just said, this is the offer for Black Friday, but the price is the same. But people believe that the price is lower and they buy the product. Yes, maybe sometimes there are uh, some prices that are lower than Black Friday, but not all prices are lower, right? So, uh, this is psychological pricing, okay? Because they are playing with our minds. <laughs> it's very interesting. So he says, this is often seen in prices ending in 99. For example, an item market 199 will be perceived as closer in price to 100 than 200. I don't know if you perceive that one, but I, I know that. It's not true, right? So that, that happens. Do you have any questions on this? Hmm. No, not teacher. This is the, the psychological pricing. It is a good strategy around the price, the, the establish the price of the product. Actually, it is. I mean, uh, this is so common right now that you don't have to be a specialist in pricing just to say, put it 199, right? So, yeah, things like that happen. For example, in Salvador, and the campaign, the market of Super Selectus is the uh, Wednesday fresh, uh, all Wednesdays fresh, and your meats and uh, fruits uh, is a slow price. It is a psychological strategy because it made a construction in our brain that we we think that the, that is true. That is uh, more more low the price than the, the another days, but not ever is is the the same the, the situation. Um, maybe is more expensive than another day. That is true. As yeah, mm. that happens sometimes. It's even more expensive than other days, and uh, because of the words or the presentation of the pricing, we believe some thoughts, right? But, well, a strategy that I do when I want to buy something that is kind of expensive is I go to three, four places. And I see sometimes the same product is with different prices in different stores. So that's interesting. Even sometimes within the same company. So that is very interesting. Good. Premium pricing. Uh, let's see. This is going to be for Jose Alfredo. Okay. <clears throat> Premium pricing. A high price is said to establish an exclusive product of high quality. Designer cars and premium brand stores are a good example of this type of pricing. Very good. So those are premium pricing. A high price is said to establish an exclusive product of high quality. So this means that sometimes, I mean, this is like, I don't know, okay, any product. Water, for example. You know that a bottle of water uh, of uh, crystal is not that expensive, but there are other brands in the supermarket or in other stores that are very expensive. And it's the same water, right? Because they want to, to show that it's exclusive, that it's not for everybody. It's just, it's just for a special people. That's why they want to, to make you feel that you are special. Like for example, uh, I remember this, this bracelet, Pandora. I remember those Pandora. They were very famous and they are very expensive, right? But it's just a bracelet. I mean, that is it. Just because of the brand, that was very expensive. And it's because they want to... Uh, go ahead. Evian, Evian Water. Evian Water. Brands, yeah. Very high cost. Very high, high price. Exactly. Rolex, I mean, yes, they have a very nice quality. But is, is it worth it, Mauricio? This is like uh, 
Bugatti. Bugatti, Bugatti's cars uh, are expensive, but they don't sell to anyone. Even if, if you have or you can afford it, you can buy a Bugatti if they, if they don't decide to sell a car to you. That is true. So that depends on uh, what they want to reflect, right? Not for everybody, only for special people, right? Mm -hmm. That is premium price. That is the name of this strategy, okay? And it says also designer cars and premium brand stores are a good example of this type of pricing. For example, one thing that is very common uh, or new is this uh, Psycho Bunny. Have you ever seen the clothes on Psycho Bunny? Uh, it's a store of, I mean, the shirts, the clothes there are simple, very simple, but they are very expensive and uh, not like the regular one. Uh, cars, for example, yes, as we discussed, uh, watches, there are a lot of examples on this one. So this is also very, very common. Good. Uh, any questions here? It's clear, teacher. Very good. Okay, the other one says optional pricing. Let's see, uh, Carla Alejandra. Okay, optional pricing. A company may add optional extra item within the price to increase a product's attractiveness. Car sellers may offer car insurance for the first year, for example. Okay, so this is another thing, optional pricing. So it's up to you, is your decision. So a company may add optional extra items within the price to increase a product's attractiveness. So I believe this part is clear. And this is very common. Car sellers may offer car insurance for the first year, for example. Uh, when you go to La Curaçao right now and right, you buy any product, I mean, a refrigerator, for example, or cement, they tell you, right, you buy the product, but you can pay five extra years of warranty. Uh, and maybe most of the people, they say, no, I don't want that one. But some people, they say, mm, that is good, right? Because they can, uh, if something happens to my product, they can help it. Okay, uh, do you have any questions or any comments on this one? No one. For me, no teacher. Good. So you can see that there are lots of strategies, right? very interesting. And now that we understand these strategies, we understand companies and how they play with our minds. Right? So we, I mean, I believe that nowadays everybody wants to get money, right? They want to people to get give money to them. So the strategy is for this one a lot. Okay, cost-based pricing. Juan Roberto. Cost-based pricing. Sim simple, uh, a company may determine the exact cost of processing and selling an adjective, uh, a marker, that may be desirable for profits and price accordingly. This, myth, this method may be used in a changing industry where even a cost of production are unpredictable. Very good. So this is cost-based pricing. What is cost-based pricing? What do you understand on that one? Precio basado en el costo. Very good. So that is it. So simply a company may determine the exact cost of producing and selling an object. Add a markup. A markup, do you know what is a markup? Markup. I'm sorry? Okay, markup is in Spanish margen. So it's a percentage. It, it, this is the most simple uh, way for you to, to set a price. When you know what is the cost and the, uh, let's say, what will be the expenses of 
everything to produce and sell products. And then a percentage. You increase in a percentage on the pricing so you can show that one to, to the public. That would be it's kind of simple. So it says add a markup that may be desirable for profits and price account. This is the trick in this kind of strategy that you have to set a percentage not too high because you want that people want to buy the product and not too low because you want to get some profits. So that is the most important. So you need to do a market search and many other things. Uh, to check what would be that part. This method may be used in a changing industry where even costs of production are unpredictable. So that happens, that happens. Sometimes there are some products where the raw materials, one of the words that we checked at the beginning of this class, uh, also they have variable pricing. So a percentage is going to help you Keep a standard price and have a good profit for this one, a good percentage of profit. Uh, what is unpredictable? Impredecible. Impredecible. Very, very nice. That would be unpredictable, like life novelist or, or like Los Chorros Highway that is unpredictable. We never know what's going to happen. Okay, any questions here? Not teacher, but I agree with you. Los Chorros is unpredictable. Oh, it's crazy. You know? I transit there every day and we never know. Sometimes we get there at six in the morning, sometimes we get there at nine in the morning. So. That is crazy. Let's see what I happens. Drive, I drive the two hours uh, become my house. Yes, yeah. uh, today. Today. Yeah, it's two crazy. Hours. Yeah. And Santa Tecla. yeah, I heard that it's going to be this way uh, up to the 30th of November, uh, of September, right? So it's going to be a long, a long way. So I, I understand. I understand, Oscar, because. I, I lived uh, in Lourdes, Colón, and maybe uh, in 2000, 2020, 2012, 2020, yes, it's crazy. The, the Los Chorros is crazy. It's crazy, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know what is going to happen in the future because something has to be done. I know that they are going to build the, the other way that is elevator, right? But when is going to happen that one? We don't know, right? And if they start today, maybe two years of building that one. That is a lot. So let's be ready. Let's see what happens. Unpredictable. Nice. Okay, let's go to the next. How to price. So this is like the process of getting some pricing. Okay. Uh, let's read that one. This is going to be for, let's see. Sandra Gomez. Okay, how to price. Basic pricing process. As previously mentoring. Previously. Hello? Previously. Excuse me? Previously. Previously. Mm -hmm. Mentoring a company's pricing strategy and method change of life. Circumstances and type. This is why there is no fixed methodology to accompany with right endeavor. Endeavor. Hello? Endeavor. Endeavor. Endeavor? Endeavor, yeah. Okay. The followers a step can add as general. The line. Guideline. 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 Okay. So basic pricing process. So here we are going to learn how to how to set a pricing uh, on a product or process. As previously mentioned, what is previously? 
previa, previamente. previamente. Very good. So, as previously mentioned, a company's pricing strategy and method changes with circumstances and time. So, this is something that we need to be ready if you have a company, right? Or if you are in charge of setting the pricing. You need to be ready to change the way that you are going to calculate the price, the strategies. This is why there is no fixed methodology to aid a company in its pricing endeavors. What is endeavors? It's a yes. special yeah. Yeah. Maybe, no. Empeño. Empeño. The efforts that you have for something, right? So, however, it says, the following steps can act as a general guide. So we're going to see some steps for you to uh, set the pricing of something. So, and what is A? Anybody? A. Auxilio, ayuda. Ayuda. To help on something, right? Distancia. Very good. Nice. All right. So it says number one. This is the first one. Develop marketing strategy. So this is going to be for Silvia Patricia. Uh time market analysis acts as a logic as a logical starting point for pricing decisions. A business follows up a market analysis with a division and definition of the market into segments, each with its distinct requirements, requirements. And requirements and needs. After this, a decision, a decision needs to be made regarding the desired segment to be targeted. The product and brand position, positioning is the ambassador of this identified Based. segment. This identified segment. Very good. So the first one says develop marketing strategy. Uh, a detailed market analysis acts as a logical starting point for price and decision. So the first step that you need to do is to analyze the market, the objective, the people that you are going to sell the product to. Who are they? What are the ages? Are they women, men, uh, different things? So you decide not only for pricing, but for all the marketing stuff, right? Then it says, a business follows up a market analysis with a division and definition of the market into segments. This is uh, the way that you are going to analyze this in segments, okay? Because maybe you are going to aid to people uh, young people, let's say 18 years to, I don't know, 30 years. But it's not the same, these kind of people in San Salvador, than in Santa Ana, than in San Miguel. So definitely you have to segment everything. Okay, and then it says each with distinct, distinct requirements and needs. And what is each? Each. Cada. Very good. After this, a decision needs to be made regarding the desired segments to be targeted. The product and brand positioning is then based on these identified segments. So that will be it. The first one is to develop a marketing strategy. Do you have any questions here, pronunciation questions or comments? Uh, what is the pronunciation is pre, pre, requiring requirements 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 okay requirements yeah good any other questions regarding 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 yeah that is a very good question what is regarding friends Mm -hmm. I don't know about this. How about it? About it. so, uh, it's like for example, in this case, is after this, a decision needs to be made regarding so about 
is like about this desire seeming to be tired. In this context is about that one, about something. In the Spanish? Any, mm -hmm. um, well, there are many ways to say that one. In, in this line, for example, is something like una decisión necesita ser hecha respecto al segmento deseado, pero no es respecto, sino que así lo decimos nosotros en español. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, let's go to the next. Make marketing mixed decisions. Okay, this is going to be for, let's see. Uh, Victor Eduardo, is it possible for you to read? Yes. Okay. Make marketing mix decisions. Once the segment and positioning is somewhat in place, the marketing mix planning comes into effect. Here, the product, distribution, and promotional elements are decisions to focus upon and to finalize. 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 Very good. So the second part of the process is to make marketing mix decisions. So we saw already that there are four a piece in the marketing mix, right? So once the segments and positioning is somewhat in place, so once we know what is the segment, meaning the market of people that we're going to focus on, uh, the marketing mix planning comes into effect. This is the planning, right? So you know what is the people that you are going to sell the product to. So you need to, to start planning what is going to be the marketing strategy. Here, the product distribution that you know that is the place and promotional elements are decisions to focus upon and to finalize. That means that you need to start analyzing the strategies that you are going to make and get to a decision on what is the best option. Uh, this is something that you need to do not only at the beginning when you are going to launch a product, but also every time that is needed. Sometimes the market changes, the world changes, right? As we said yesterday, with pandemic, a lot of things happen. A lot of businesses and companies close and many other open. So we need to be ready to adapt ourselves, right, to this new world that we're in. Uh, any questions here? Any pronunciation questions or uh, vocabulary questions? Yes, teacher. What the mean uh, is open. Okay, very good. Uh, any uh, Anybody wants to say open? What is open? This is very common when we say once upon a time. Do you remember that in the stories? <laughs> once upon a time, yes. This is a series on, on Netflix. Ah, yeah, I saw that one. That is about once my people. Time. Yeah, supernatural things. It's very interesting. I saw like two seasons. I, I didn't see the other ones. Okay, this is a preposition, okay? That in Spanish, we can say that it's like sobre or ah, depending on what you are talking about. Okay, so focus up on that is okay. a, a focus. I mean, that is a phrasal verb. Uh, and okay, sobre lo que se enfoca. So that will be it. Ah, okay, thank you, teacher. Focus up on. So that is a phrasal verb. So we were discussing. Phrasal. Yeah, that is some of that. Okay, any other questions? No, for me, not teacher. Very good. Let's continue then with number three. Um, let's see, Jennifer Amaya. Not possible. Aida Isabel. Um, can you listen to me? Yes. Okay. 
estimate demand cure. Cure is correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. Another market analysis needs to be con conducted at this point. In this one, there is uh, there needs to be a specific information garnered about how the price affect uh, the quality of the product demand. All right, so this is estimate demand curve. Another market analysis needs to be conducted at this point. So at the beginning, remember that we analyze the market to see what is the segments that we're going to launch the product to. So we need to understand what kind of people are going to be the ones that are going to buy our products, right? So in this one, there needs to be specific information gathered about how the price affects the quantity of the product demand. So we need to understand at this point, we know that we have a product, characteristics and features, the pricing, and we need to know, uh, we know already, uh, who is going to be the people that uh, are they willing to buy this is something that they need. Uh, for example, seasons. This is something that we can think about. Seasons. Uh, what can I say? Uh, umbrellas. Uh, you cannot sell umbrellas I mean, in, in December, right? The way or, or the time for you to sell umbrellas is in March, April, maybe September, that is very rainy as we discussed. So this and that one, how this affects the people and how it's going to affect our business, that is something that is very important to, to understand. Okay, and this is the, the analysis that we need to do here whenever we have done the other two points. Uh, let me see if there is any question. Where we will... Gather, what is gather? Joint, reunido. Reunido, very good. That is it, gather, gathering. And I don't see any other. Do you have any questions here? The correct pronunciation of gather is? Gather. 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 Okay. And uh, yeah, there is, it's very common to use this word in, with ING, uh, the gathering. When you say the gathering is like people getting together or something putting together. So the most common is people. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Teacher, uh, in, in estimate demand curve is, for example, um, more people in El Salvador eat chicken in in December. That is true. Something like that is actually the estimated demand curve. So when exactly, what aspects in general is going to affect that people actually are going to buy my product? So that, that is like the, the important part here. <laughs> nice. Let's go to the number four, uh, Jonathan. Uh, number four, calculate cost. A company can now get an ac accurate assessment of the total fixed and variable, 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 yeah. variable oh, cost associated with the product. These are a necessary input for pricing decisions as the final price needs to at least cover this cost. Very good. Interesting this one. So calculate costs. Uh, whenever you see a word that uh, has STS, we need to pronunciate the S, the T, and the S. So costs, some of a company can now get an accurate. What is accurate? Precision. Precise, something like that. Like very, very accurate. When you say something is very accurate, it's like, it's being preciso. It's being bastante exacto, not 100%, but let's say 98%. Uh, 
Assessment. What is assessment? Do you remember? Diagnostic. Evaluation. Evaluation. Something like that. Evaluation. So a company can now get an accurate assessment of the total fixed and variable cost. This is interesting. What is a fixed cost? Costo de reparación. Something that costos fijos. So something that every month is almost the same or the same, right? Uh, and of course, the variable costs are the ones that depends. Depends on many things, right? Associated with the product. So at this point, uh, we know exactly how much we're going to invest in producing a product. These are unnecessary inputs for pricing decisions. Do you remember what is input? Entrada. Entrada, very good. These are necessary inputs for pricing decision. As the final price, this to at least cover these costs. And that is the most basic in, in a business, right? You are going to launch a product and at least you need to cover the cost of producing. Of course, the main purpose of a product or, or a company in general is that you have profits, not to cover the cost only, but to have profit. So uh, this is at least what we uh, need to achieve. Of course, when the company is new or the product is new, sometimes at the very beginning, it's going to be difficult to get profits, right? But that's why you need to analyze very well the strategies, in general, and of course, the, the pricing studies. Um, what is at least? Al menos. Por lo menos, right? At least. Okay. Very good. Do you have any questions on this one? No questions. No teacher. Okay, good. No, no teacher. Let's go to number Assess five. Environment. Environment. Assess environment. Monica Avalos. Hello. Um, we listen like a noise, but I can listen to you. I don't know if you're talking. Yeah, we are not able to listen to you. Yeah, okay, no problem. Eric Reyes. Okay, okay. As is environment, another viral element. Viral. Uh, another Better element that fits into pricing is the environment. This means uh, understanding mm -hmm. the competitors' strategies, their product, and its value, as well as an understanding of any industry or legal constraint. Okay, very good. So it says uh, another well, assets environment. Of course, you know what is assets. Do you remember what is assets? That is like assessment. What is assets? Evaluation. Evaluation. The difference is the assets is the verb, and assessment is the and no words, Monica. Uh, and assess and assess 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 is the verb, and assessment is a noun. Uh, and environment. What is environment? Ambiente. Entorno. Exactly. So we need to evaluate the environment. And that's why it says another viral element that feeds. What is feeds? Alimentar. Very good. Another viral element that feeds into pricing is the environment. Uh, look, this is very interesting because the, the preposition is into fits into prices, no fits pricing or fits to pricing, into pricing. This is very important. 
So then it says, this means an understanding of the competitor's strategies, their product and its value, as well as an understanding of any industry or legal or legal constraints. Uh, what is constraints? Oh, I'm sorry. Restrictions. Restrictions. Very good. Something that is is like a barrier. Sometimes that happens when you are going to launch a product. You need to have uh and maybe not a lawyer for yourself, but a, an advisor. Because uh, we need to to understand very well what's going on on this. Okay, so we need to understand the environment in all the aspects. So, because that is going to impact. Uh, I remember a story, I don't know if you, have, you know the story, that uh, in India, no, no it, was not, it was in an Arabic country. Uh, they launched high heels for women, you know, shoes. Uh, and the brand of, of the shoes, as you know, as you notice in the in the shoes, is there where you put the, the, the feet. But the writing of the brand, it was very similar to the word Allah. Nobody bought the, the shoes, nobody. And when the, the marketeers, they came and analyzed why this is happening, why nobody's buying the, the shoes, uh, even when they change the studies, they realize that one. So you need to, before you launch a product, you need to analyze the environment because that is something very good. Any questions here? No, no for me. Okay. Constraints and restriction is the same thing? Uh, yes, yes. Constraints is like more... Uh, more, more formal. So this is just in more formal environment, more formal speaking. Okay. Number six, set pricing objectives. Let's see who has some that. Veronica Elizabeth. Not possible. Uh, let's see then. Ernesto. Okay, teacher. Number six, set pricing objectives. As detailed able, there are several objectives that a company can have from its pricing strategy. This is the point in the process that those objectives need to be discussed and agreed upon. Very good. So, set pricing objectives. Of course, uh, there has to be objectives on the pricing because, uh, I mean, depending on how much profit you, you want to do or things that I want, and you, you can set the price. It says as detail above, what is above? Oh. Oh. Uh, so... Okay, arriba. Remember that it's not the same to say on or up than above. Okay, above is a preposition that we are going to use when you are speaking about a, a plane surface. Cuando hablamos de una superficie plana, podemos usar above. En este caso se utiliza porque estamos hablando de papel. Como se mencionó arriba, in este escrito, in este documento, something like that one. So there is where we're going to use above, okay? So as detail above, there are several objectives that a company can have from its pricing yeah. strategy. Uh, what is several? Various. Very good. Several is like main, so. Uh, this is the point in the process that those objectives need to be discussed and agreed upon. Okay, uh, agreed upon is like you need to agree on the objectives. Remember that upon is like on, right? 
So this is something very common that we can use with agree. Uh, do you have any questions here? Not teacher, but I have a, another question. No, Go ahead. Uh, will will we have class the next Friday, teacher? Friday fifteen. That in, is a very Independence Day. Independence Day. Uh, well, in my experience, in uh, according to the calendar that we have, we are going to finish on October the 9th. So, if you count the days, it's missing one day. So, I believe that we are not going to have classes. Uh, the most common is that we don't have classes on holidays. Uh, anyways, most likely uh, on Thursday, we are going to receive the uh, the notification on the WhatsApp group, the formal notification, right? But in my experience, I believe that we are not going to have this. Okay, teacher, thanks. Very good. Any other question? Okay. Number seven, Mauricio. Determine, determine price using all the information collected and analyzed till this point the company is now in a good position to set the best price for its product a pricing method and structure can be formulated along with any possible sales promotion or discounts these steps are known necessarily all follow in this sect. Some steps might be skipped or bundled together, while others perform a different stage in different order depending on several factors, like product or business model. Very good. So now that we have discussed all the process, we are ready to determine the price, right? So using all the information collected, as you can see, it's not only to say, hmm, the price is $5. No, right? It's a process. You need to research. This is the real, the real, uh, the, the reason why many businesses, they don't achieve, they don't succeed because they don't research. They don't do a process. They say, I have an idea, let's run a business and that's it, right? And then sometimes the, the consumers, they don't come. You, they don't sell the products. You need to have a process. In mind, this is the process only for pricing, right? Uh, if we're speaking about uh, the whole process for a product, all that is a lot, a lot of things that you can do, all that you have to do. So it says using all the information collected and analyzed till this point, a company is now in a good position to set the best price for its products. A pricing method and structure can be formulated along with any possible sales promotions or discounts. So here, I mean, remember that the pricing is not only to set the pricing, it's also like what other strategies can we have so we can attract people. What is along? Okay, along is a preposition that we use when you are stating that something is walking next to other thing. So I can say walk along with me. So that means that you are going to walk next to me. But since we are in movement, we don't use next, so we use along. So that's why it says a pricing method and structure can be formulated along with any possible. So together, they are in movement together. Okay. Then it says these steps are not necessarily all followed in this sequence. Some steps might be skipped. What is skipped?
Saltar. Very good. So that you are not going to do the steps, right? Or bundle together. We checked today what is bundle. While others performed at different stages in different order, depending on several factors like product or business model. So that is it. You're ready to set the pricing at this point if you follow the steps that we checked about. Do you have any questions on this? What is the correct pronunciation? Uh, for which word? Uh, skipped. 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 Okay. You're and welcome. Another follow it. Uh, let me check. Uh, follow. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Not for me, not teacher. Nice. Let's move on. Uh, this is something that we're going to check tomorrow, not today, because tomorrow is Wednesday. Huh. Very good. So we have a few minutes, so we are going to do free practice uh, like this. So let's see. Uh -huh. Let's speak with Oseas. Okay. Hey, hello, how are you? I'm fine, you? I am very well, very tired, very wet because it was raining, but I'm happy to be here. Uh, where are you from? Where do you live? I'm from Metapang. I live in the suburbs. Okay, we are very close. It, it was raining there today. I can understand you very well because it's it's raining right now but actually that was the question if it was raining <laughs> yeah it's raining right now okay yeah here it's raining as well uh, i know that in some other parts of the country it's also raining um do i want to ask you what is the meaning of oseas oseas uh i heard a lot of time ago that Oseas means hope. Hope. It's a, 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 it's a biblical name. Biblical name, yeah. Okay, I didn't know that one. Very interesting. Yeah. And do you work there in Metapan? Yeah, I work in Metapan and in a, in a factory called Avicola Salazar. Ah, okay, very good. Interesting. Yeah. And we, uh, we produce pet food and fish food. I my am very interesting. So, and uh, this is like, I don't know. Do you use or do you wear uh, like special things like helmets or glasses or anything like that? If I wear some glasses, uh, how for, for your work? I mean, yeah, for protection I, or anything like that. I have to wear some um, uh, equipo de protección. Protection equipment. Yeah, protection equipment. Yeah, uh, helmet, uh, glasses maybe, and mask, and sometimes <clears throat> uh, protección auditiva. Ah, okay, for noise. Yeah, that's all I have to wear in my, my work. Okay, interesting, very good. Yeah. And what do you factory. do in your... I'm sorry? It's a big factory. You work in the yeah. Metapan. Yeah. Me saludas a Manuel Inés Salazar, él me conoce. Dile que le mando yeah. saludo a un amigo. Ya es el dueño, sí. Ah, okay. I will tell him. Very good, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay, nice. And uh, okay, thank you for sharing, Oseas. Okay, you're welcome. Very good. Now, let's see. I'm going to choose somebody else. Blanca Tunaka. Hello, Blanca. Hello, 
Hi, teacher. Hello, how are you? I am I am 50, 54 years. Okay. Yes. And when is your birthday? I'm I'm birthday 11 August. Hmm. August. August oh, 11. Okay. So it was recently passed. Very good. And uh, uh, it's very interesting your last name. It's not that common. This is the very first time that I listen to, to your last name. So uh, where is your family from? My family from is uh, now in Salco City. It's mm -hmm. in city in, in Sonsonate. In Sonsonate. And that last name is is very popular there in Sonsonate. Your last name? No, no, it's popular. Uh, my my last name uh, is is coming or oh, procedures. Oh, we can hear you. You are muted. Um, procedures. Si, eh, según investigación de investigación en de redes sociales uh -huh. eh, es eh, um, Suramérica en um, Ecuador from Ecuador from Ecuador okay interesting so maybe your family comes from that country yes yeah, I never heard your last, so it's very interesting, very nice. And what is your other last name? Mm, no, 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 understand. Mm, yeah. Nice. What is your second last name? Okay, my second last name is uh, Reyes. Ah, okay, very good, interesting, nice. And where are you from, Blanca? I don't know. I'm from. Mm -hmm. I'm from um, is is now Salco, now Salco City. So you live there right now? Yes, yes, I live. I live now Salco oh. City. And do you work there in now Salco? No, no, I work in uh department la libertad in department in, in, in municipio is colon colon um, colon so uh i believe that you travel every day yes yes every day and the bus in sonsonate san salvador mm, the bus how much time do you spend traveling for you to go to your work The traveler, the traveler. How much do you travel? How much time? How many hours? Oh, uh, it's um, once one hours or might might one hours might the house mm -hmm. the travel. Oh, that's not that bad. That is good. Yeah, that is interesting. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much, Blanca. Thank you. Nice. Let's choose another person. Let's see. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know who to choose. Mauricio. Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Nice. And uh, where are you from? I am from San Salvador. I live in Mexicanos. Mexicanos. Very good. I have never been in Mexicanos. Is that far away from, let's say, downtown or Salvador del Mundo? No, it's close. So, uh, if you know the Walmart, Walmart Constitution, I, I live near. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I know that one. So, that's good. That's good. And uh, do you work near your house? And actually, I work at home. I, ah, I, I am doing home office now. 
Ah, uh, that is amazing. I, I remember I used to do that one when I was in pandemic and it was amazing. But now I have to travel every day to some suburbs. So those days are gone. Yes, you can save money <laughs> working at home. Uh, but and it's, it's very stressful because you have your work in your, ha in your house and you see the computer all day, even in Saturday or Sunday, you you, you have your your work tools here. It's stressful sometimes. Actually, I was reading about that one for the pandemic, that sometimes we can get stressed only to see the computer there, right? So you see the computer and it's like, oh my goodness, I have to work, right? So, yeah. It's, it's, it's true. I mean, it's, it's something that happens. I mean, uh, I believe I believe that everything in life has uh, pros and cons, right? That happens. Okay. And, uh, and what do you do in your free time? In my free time, I, I usually play with my son. I have two children, uh, uh, four years son. And my daughter has, my daughter's, uh, it's, it's at nine years old. Okay. But, uh, she she has a special condition. She can walk and, and talk. And I spend all my weekend with her. With ah, but that is interesting that you have the time to spend time with her. Yes. I work uh, to from Monday to Friday and I have I have weekends up. That is good. Yeah, that is good because uh, you are there with the family and you are able to, to spend time with them. But of course, as you say, sometimes it's stressful because everything is there, right? So you also have your family there so you have to work and at the same time uh, be be with them. So I know it's, it's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes you need to relax. You need to think about yourself. Yes. Okay, yeah, sometimes good. I sometimes I ride my bike at night and it's this this stressful for me. That is it. You need to do things like that because then you will be healthy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Very good, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay, my friends, so uh, this is the class of tonight, and I'm going to check the attendance so you can go to bed early. Let's see, um, Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. Present. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodriguez. Present. Good. Eric Enrique Reyes Martinez. Present, coach. Good. Ernesto Jose Andrade Medina. Present teacher. Good. Ingrid Paola Hernández Tenorio. Jennifer Esmeralda Amaya Arias. Present. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. José Alfredo Present. Hueso López. Thank you. Present teacher. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Here, teacher. Good. Carla Alejandra Castillo. Here, teacher. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present, teacher. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Present. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present, teacher. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Present teacher. Good. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. I'm here. Good. Sandra Janira Gómez Rogero. Present teacher. Good. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Present teacher. Good. Víctor Eduardo Reyes Navarrete. Present. Good. Veronica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow in Dream in English.
Good night. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good night. Tomorrow. Good night. Take, care. Take care. So do you. Hello, how are you? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hello.